video is a part of a video hop on primitive art. The video hop is hosted by Peg Robinson. There's a link to her channel and a link to all the participating channels in this hop. So primitive art, there's a lot of discussion on exactly what it is, even among art historians. I googled it and I've been reading about it. I find it's really interesting. One thing that most experts agree on is that it is not defined as art that is created by specifically untalented people. But it is more the early stages of art in our in our histories and in our cultures. And as art developed throughout history, art styles developed. We have several different styles, but that primitive art is what I see as early, early, early art. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about primitive art and what it is. My video is going to be about creating your own art in a primitive art style. What I want to do is take a photo and create a primitive art piece from it. An art piece in the primitive art style. So I've looked at photos and I've separated them into two groups. Some that I think are definite candidates for a primitive art piece and ones that I don't think would work as well. Now this one is just fun. I like this one. It has the billy goat and you'll see a lot of am animals pictured in primitive art so I'm going that would be fun and it's drawing a little cart with two kids in it. I'm going to use this photo as inspiration for my primitive art piece. Now I'm going to work on Master's Touch watercolor 12 by 12 paper. This is inexpensive. I've been doing all my composite art journaling on 12 by 12 and that's where this piece will end up when I'm finished with it in my 2017 composite art journal. So that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to start out by doing the wood in the background. So I'm going to go into fast forward and work on this and when I'm finished I will come back and talk about it. I start out by painting the background. I'm using white, light blue, and a mocha craft paint. And what I'm going to do is simulate a wooden board in the background and I want them going vertically and I'm really liking how just scraping that with the credit card gives me the nice board background. Now I'm looking at the photo and translating it to a pattern that I'm going to use to cut out my painted papers to create this piece. The little billy goat there, just sketching him out, and the little cart. And even if I run off of the page, that's okay. I, they're just pattern pieces. I'll be cutting these out. Just getting an idea of the composition of the page. Here I'm cutting them out. And then I start to addition them on the page and choosing my painty papers. The painty papers I got from Lucia McGill as a gift. You see I'm using the green there for the ground. And I do use some in a paper pack that I got from Shannon Green. That Billy Goat. That sheet of paper is a piece of citrusol, uh, National Geographic citrusol. That I'm sure that's how Shannon Green created that. And it works perfect for the body of this Billy Goat. I'm really happy how that turned out. And as I addition it on the page there, you'll see it more. I'm just fussy cutting it out here. I really like
like his tail and the ears and the beard of that billy goat. It just gives him a certain little stubbornness, I guess you could say. <laughs> Now, these numbers, I wanted to put them on the cart, but they're way too big, and they're even too big to put at the top of the page as a unit, so I'm fussy cutting them out, and I'll be gluing them separately to the page and kind of rearranging them in a random fashion. I just like how they look on the page. They really have no meaning. but they just, I think they belong there. <laughs> I'm gluing them down. I am using Elmer's glue here, but I do use Liquitex to collage all the other items down. You really don't see me collage the items down. In the interest of time, I had to snip some of this out, but you can see I've already got the billy goat and the cart and the children on there. I'm detailing him now. The little hoofs and the legs, and the tail and the beard. Fun little piece. And I've gotten inspired from that vintage photo. Here I'm adding detail. The wheels are, I'm sure that was a steampunk stencil. Jelly print from Lucille McGill painted the numbers 1924 on that card because that's what's on the photo 1924 and I write the word Davenport not sure what Davenport meant but it was on the card so I put it on my my art journal page that billy goat just had to have a sunflower adding some detailing to the little figures now I'm adding a black border around the edge of the page just to pull everything together as a unit. Paint in my sunflower. And then I sign it. I think I'm done at this point, but I set it aside and I said it's not primitive enough for me, so I get out the gold. Gold fixes everything. And then I start adding more color. It just, it, it needed to, more finishing. And I'm adding more color to those sunflowers and working with the wheels. I, at this point, I'm just in a routine to where I'm having fun with it. I'm adding decoration to that part adding a little more red touch to the wheels and the body of the cart. Drawing another sunflower because that billy goat's going to eat them. I just know it. <laughs> Detailing it. I am using the Posca pen that Peg Robinson sent me. Now I was going to leave the outfits on the children white, but they just, they need more color. And I'm working with the heads. I decide that their heads need to be just a little bit more round. So I'm detailing in their facial features. And then I'm painting the sunflower. And just like I said, I'm having fun with it at this point. And I think that's a part of doing a primitive piece. You aren't saying, I'm going to do primitive. You're saying, I'm going to draw a cart with billy goat and a kids in it. And it is, it's, you just kind of fall into having fun with it and making your page work. adding details to it. Now, for some reason or another, I decided that that billy goat needed to be walking on a cobblestone street. And those white outfits were not colorful enough for me, so I gave him a blue jacket and I gave the little gal a 
pink dress just added color to it, the page now I'm really starting to feel like this is getting close to completion adding some more cobblestone streets there as if they were riding in their cart being pulled by the billy goat down the street I'm really happy with how this has turned out Primitive art, it just has its very own charm. I think I am much happier with this. I went in and added a little cobblestone street for the cart and the goat and added a little decorative flower. I worked on the children a little bit more even though their clothing is white here, they needed some color for this. And I rounded their heads, made them very geometric. This is very much in the primitive style. This is not meant to be a sophisticated piece, but it has its own charm. And I think that is what makes primitive. Now, if you look at this, I have very simple, basic shapes. The heads are basic circles. The goat is just a basic shape. I did not do a lot of detail to him. I let the paper define the shadow of the goat. The sunflowers are very simple. The wheels on here, while they're the steampunk, they have sort of gears in there. They still are basic circle shapes, as are the big, huge numbers. In the end, I'm very happy with this. I really do like how it turned out. And this is just an example of how you can take a vintage photo and turn it into a very stylistic, in this case, a primitive piece of art. I'm really happy with it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.